What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to basketball. I've got another mock draft for you guys. You know I want to stay up to date on these whenever they come out. I think it's fun to look at the prospects, see who's rising and falling and stuff. And obviously, we don't really have any film on like any of them right now. Like, yes, there's old film, but I don't want to watch any of that stuff. I want to watch the stuff right now that exists and that'll happen this season because people grow and they change a lot at this age. But anyway, let's get into the next NBA draft. But remember, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment. I've responded to every single comment on my YouTube channel up to this point, and I intend to keep on doing so. All right, let's get into it. Shout out Bleacher Report as always. Let's do us a mock draft, man. Let's do us a mock draft. First one, the Brooklyn Nets taking Cooper flag. Yep, the Cooper flag sweepstakes has begun. I watched like that game against Arizona State or whatever, at least the film of it. Cooper flag looks so good. He looks so good. I know the three-point shot is a concern and everything, but I'm, I'm not worried about it. Just not worried about it. The form looks good. It all looks very solid. He looks very confident. His defensive instincts are great. He's young for being this far too. Awesome. Pro comparison, Andre Kirilenko, completely disagree. Jalen Johnson, kind of see that. Sean Marion, that makes a little bit more sense to me. I know he doesn't like move like Sean Marion, but the type of player, like very good defensive forward, like should be able to get above the rim pretty good, should... I, I think turn into a good shooter. So uh, funny enough, my college coach played against Sean Marion uh, at like a JUCO. Do you guys know Sean Marion went to like a JUCO? He told me he played against him in like a JUCO state championship. So kind of interesting, huh? Kind of interesting. But anyway, uh, Cooper Flag, awesome. He's awesome, right? He's most likely going to go number one. I know the conversations are going to be had about other people. I think it's going to be hard to knock Cooper Flag off. Like even if he got injured, right? It'd have to be a, a scary injury and knock on wood. We don't want anybody to get hurt or anything, but Cooper Flag not going one. I don't see it. Who's? I don't even know like the order of these picks. Uh, pick number two, the Washington Wizards, Dylan Harper currently at number two. Interesting. One of the two Rutger players expected to go here. Who are we comparing him to? Kobe White. I totally see that one. Jalen Brunson is who I really uh, look at him as. James Harden, maybe. Uh, basically, extremely skilled, like a uh, point guard, shooting guard, big size, 6'6", 215 already. That's awesome, right? Uh, the shooting looks fine to me, honestly. Um, he's not a very explosive athlete, and that's why I think of him as like Jalen Brunson. I see him as like a thick guard, right? But already has a pretty good handle. He's got multiple counter moves already, which you're always going to hear me say like that's elite for someone their age to know how to navigate that many different types of coverages and stuff and attack them in different ways. Really, really like Dylan Harper. I don't hate seeing him at two at any uh, by any means. I'm just personally a little surprised. I feel like wings are harder to find, and so I'm surprised his teammate isn't here. But Dylan Harper, man, I, th I think he's going to be a good player. And uh, let's get this, get this out of the way. I think this draft class is really, really good. Have I watched a ton of film on it yet? No, I haven't. But my buddies that do, and they do this for a living for NBA teams, they're like, Nah, I VC. And again, they call me VC, but it is what it is. And y'all don't need to know why that is. But <laughs> um, they're like, nah, this class is this class is good. There's a couple dudes here that we see some pretty good star potential here. And Dylan Harper is one of them. Awesome, awesome basketball player. Uh, Portland Trailblazers, Ace Bailey. They should be so lucky to get a guy like Ace Bailey. The other Rutgers player, 6'10", 200 pounds. Brandon Miller, Tracy McGrady, yeah, whether Ace Bailey can realistically compete for a number one draft spot will come down to his efficiency. Agreed. Size, wings, shot creation and everything. Yep, he can get above the rim. Dummy athletic. Um, yeah, no, he, he looks like he could have the full package. He, like, it very well could be a thing that we look back at in five years and Ace Bailey is like already an NBA all-star or something like that. And we can be like, why didn't we just take him one or something like that? I don't know. Again, I think Cooper Flagg is going to be really good and so it's Dylan Harper. I think they're, they're all going to be very good. But um, Ace Bailey, Bailey he just like he just looks like he could be an NBA stud right like he passes the vibe test the look test he's got great aggressiveness a good motor on him it's just everything that you could want some of his jump shot attempts are rushed or simply too difficult to justify that was going to be the point I was going to bring up he's young and he's got a motor on him I don't care I don't give two shits I can fix that I promise you I promise you oh this is my guy I I really like Edgecomb I really like Edgecomb the Detroit Pistons VJ Edgecombe, I'm going to be so mad if he ends up in Detroit. So, so mad. Victor Oladipo and Shaden Sharp. I can, I can kind of see the Oladipo one. 
I can kind of see it. There usually aren't notable on-court storylines during the summer for incoming freshmen, but yeah, he obviously got to go play in the Olympics early with uh, the Bohemian team, which is awesome. So Bohemian Bahamas, if you guys weren't aware of that, but VJ Edgecombe, uh, 6'5", 180, shooting guard, uh, really stupid athletic, can create his own shot a little bit already. We're going to see how he does. I'm a little bit worried that he's going to Baylor. I don't feel like Baylor players always translate to the NBA all that great because I don't feel like they've got a, a rigid enough system for them, but that's that's just me playing alongside buddy healed uh Aiden and eric gordon in the olympics that's obviously good for his development that's just gonna help that he's been playing against that level of competition already uh they say that his ball handling uh needs to be uh addressed and everything which sure i'd argue that a lot of these younger guys kind of need that it does worry me again that he's going to baylor um because they a lot of times the finer skills aren't taught there but is what it is. I, I really, really like his talent and I like the way that he goes about playing basketball, if I can put it that way. So I'm big on I'm big on VJ Edgecombe. By the way, I, I, I'm not going to spend like too much more time on this. I kind of just want to do like lottery, like for like in-depth stuff, and then we'll look through the rest of them pretty quickly. But that's what we're doing. Um, Nolan uh, Trey, I, somebody told me how to pronounce this. I'm so sorry. I forgot already to the Utah Jazz. Tre Traor, Traor, I, someone help, please. I'm, I'm so bad with names. I forget names in real life and everything. Like I can watch 30 hours of film, right? And I'll remember everything about those players. I promise you, I'll remember every little tendency that they have, but I will forget their name. Like I'll remember their Jersey number, not their name. So I don't know what doesn't click in my brain about it. I just suck at that stuff. I just suck. And I can't read either. So it's just, just a problem with me. But anyway, a uh, foreign guy, another French guy is coming over, y'all. The French are taking over. Um, they're comparing him to Lonzo Ball. I totally see that, right? I totally, totally see that. It's a mixed start to the season for him. I don't necessarily care. Like, he's had 27-point games, uh, 20 and 10 games. Like, it looks like he's got the vision. He's got a good ability to get to the hoop and everything. Yep, changing speed to freeze defenders. Passing skills are really advanced. I'd agree. It seems like he really understands the game the foreign players normally do, depending on how he shoots the three ball this year. Could be good. He's not from 20 he went nine for 21 from deep this summer that's fine yeah we'll take that every single time but um yeah no he looks like he could be a really skilled point guard coming into the nba again with like good height on him hopefully a frame that he can grow into a little more this shows you like how big um dylan harper is like two inches bigger but he's got like 20 pounds on him more like it's pretty crazy Pretty, pretty crazy how big Dylan Harper is already. Chicago Bulls, Drake Powell. I still haven't seen much of this guy. I haven't seen much film of him. Nobody's sending me any film of Drake Powell. And I don't, I, I'm going to be so honest with you guys. I just want, just want like a wing or a center for the Bulls. I don't need any more guards. I really don't. I don't care what you do with the team. And unless you just want to go all point guards, then I'm in, I'm in for that. But uh, Drake Powell, 6'6". Uh, six, six, uh, they compare him to Herb Jones and Will Barton. Uh, received some quality experience. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's going to build a case for starter minutes. That's that's probably why I haven't seen him much um, because uh, he's not starting. Um, he'll be able to slide him into multiple positions and roles. He's extremely well-rounded and capable of making plays on and off the ball with his pull-up, passing, improved catch-and-shoot game. And yeah, I've, I, I know he's a good athlete. Uh, Powell will make his mark this season by impacting games in different ways. Yeah, that's a lot of we don't necessarily know what he's going to be good at. And I don't know why there's like a red flag in my head about that. But nonetheless, athletic 6'6", dude cool stuff uh the charlotte hornets con, con I, I i suck at reading i'm so sorry somebody help me uh knepple knepple i ha i haven't listened i i know a lot of you will be like you've been like do you not watch the games i i'm not gonna lie a lot of times i listen on silent because i can't stand listening to a lot of the announcers that exist out there but uh yeah, no, um, yeah, Knepel or whatever. Uh, young dude going to Duke, right? He's going to be the hated white guy on Duke next to Cooper Flag this year, right? So is what it is. 6'6", six, six, shooting or small forward, right? Uh, he's compared to Wally Zerbiak. He can shoot the shit out of the basketball, right? Even with Tyrese Proctor, Caleb Foster back and Duke adding uh, Cooper Flag, he's too polished to take a back seat. Yep, he just shoots the shit out of the ball. Yep, he's super physical, super tough-minded, typical white Duke guy, right? We know the story. We've seen it a thousand times. This high at seven is interesting because I feel like there's a couple names missing from this list that I could see going before there. But I guess if this is a mock draft, do um, would the Hornets necessarily need this kind of guy? Maybe they could probably use another floor spacer at this point or something like that uh, if it's like the end of the season. So maybe uh, the Toronto Raptors, Kasparis. I, I again, I've heard somebody say this one before too. Jacusionis. 
I, I say. Uh, yeah, but he plays for Illinois, right? Um, I've, I've heard a lot about him. Um, 6'10", 200 pounds. He's from Lithuania. They compare him to Spencer Dinwiddie. He'll play his first draft eligible year at Illinois after building an impressive overseas resume. He played in the Spanish League at 16 years old. So we're going to get to see him play some college ball. He had some great numbers. Uh, he's going to operate on and off the ball. Yep, he's one of those like big forwards that has the ball like most of the game, which Illinois might just let him kind of have the Brock most of the game. So I'm very curious to see how that is. Illinois also uh, famously runs really bad offenses. So I feel like he might be one of those guys where we kind of have to look past the actual results on the court and like watch the film to understand how good he is. So something something to watch out for there uh the san antonio spurs trey johnson yeah this guy this is a guy i'm interested in uh texas 6-6 six, six, um shooting guard cool compared to cam thomas yeah dude just goes out there and get buck gets buckets i can kind of see that scouts have already seen plenty of trey johnson who participated in almost every nba sanctioned camp yeah i saw him like everywhere i feel like he was all over like ball his life and other things during the off season just kind of seems to go everywhere uh he can go get buckets there's no question about that is he going to be smart enough to play at the next level we don't know um because look like low free throw and assist rate for a guard but he's still got plenty of nba interest of course he does but yeah people are going to question some of the intangibles and stuff and is he one of those guys that's just been in aau too long ron holland right that type of guy um we don't know but looks like he's got an nba build and everything so we'll be we'll be watching him closely ah here's one that a lot of people are curious about the san antonio spurs Ben Seraf, Seraf, um, I don't know, but Israel, shout out Israel getting some more NBA players uh, out there besides just uh, Denny, but another 6'5", big point guard, man, comparison to Manu Ginobili, he turned himself into a high scouting priority after he won MVP at the European Championships, 28 points per game, five boards, five and a half assists, the fact that we're seeing the same flashes of creativity, shot making, and passing translate to the German league has been extremely encouraging. I actually have a uh, former buddy that's on his team right now telling me some pretty cool things about him. He thinks he's going to be tough. So I'm like, okay, if you say so, if you say so, I'll take your word for it. I haven't seen a ton of the film of him yet, but is what it is uh I ha he hasn't shot it well so far over the summer but he's clearly comfortable from deep and separating into mid-range pull-ups we'll see right young guys i'm not worried about efficiency right now i'm curious about like attitude and other little things they can do so we'll see the oklahoma city thunder colin murray boils uh he's the sophomore right yeah south carolina uh yep he was there last year six seven power forward compared to julius randall's uh big physical dude six seven two forty fives nuts that's a big ass dude y'all y'all can't comprehend how big of a dude that is he's poised to be one of the sec's most productive players the question is whether he adds any more to his face-up game or shooting range and if not Will scouts still buy in, right? Because he's got a very college basketball game right now, right? It's not very modern at this very moment, but you see a lot of the tools that can maybe you could turn him into something. So it's going to be a big year. Hopefully South Carolina can show off more of his skills and stuff, right? But for the time being, like, we just need to see more out of him. Um, I, I know watching him last year, I was kind of like, yeah, no, I could, I could see the picture, right? But um, it's just college basketball coaches, man. They don't know how to put these guys in good situations to save their damn lives. But is what it is. I'll be curious to see. Uh, this feels maybe a little high for him right now, but you know, is what it is. Where's where's my guys? I'm waiting for my guys. Liam McNeely uh, going to UConn. Yep, he's going to be a young shooting guy, right? Six seven. He's going to shoot the shit out of the basketball most likely. NBA team should see an easy fit and appealing archetype with Liam McNeely. He should fit into. Uh, he should look like one of the top freshman shooters and he'll uh, sell scouts further with his high IQ and passing game. Uh, I'm just going to say it typical Caucasian dude at UConn. They're going to teach him how to play NBA basketball there. They're going to make sure he's a refined individual, right? UConn's just got a phenomenal program. They're going to teach him the ins and outs of all the little things he'll need to know for the combine and everything and make sure he's completely vetted out for the draft process. He's probably going to have a lot of skills and a lot of smarts. So probably a safe pick if Houston uh, still wants to use first round picks at this point like they don't have enough good young interesting young players then sure take a McNeely why not he can fit in with probably anybody there we go now we're starting to get into some interesting ones there's there's at least one more name that I'm kind of bummed isn't that I haven't seen yet but uh come on Malak Malachi Malake I I don't I don't know, man. It's hard. But anyway, Duke, 7'2", 250, center, compared to Alex Saar. Uh, yep, just coming over from South Sudan. Stupid athlete. Stupid athlete for this size. And uh, just 7'2", 250, moving the way he does. The athleticism, the shot blocking 
crazy, but super raw. Hasn't played a ton of organized basketball. Very Joel Embiid-esque in the in like the story sense, right? But from just like a pure coordination and athleticism, like and his ability to just be like, nah, I'm gonna go block the shit out of this shot, and like it's gonna be nasty, like. Yes, he's tough. He's tough as hell. I really like him. Um, I, I think he can fit in with a lot of different teams in the NBA, and a lot of teams can use this skill set. So, curious to see. I feel like he should be higher. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is another one, too. I actually like Igor. Igor Demin. I, I did watch a little bit of film on this dude. So, uh, he's going to BYU. He's, again, going to be one of these ball handling, kind of like bigger dudes that exists out there. 6'9 from Russia compared to Jalen Rose. That's a good comparison. Anthony Black's probably a solid comparison. Hito Turkoglu. Not sure I see that one as much. Uh, there's always been a big draw to big wings who can handle and pass, right? Yep, it's extremely interesting when you find things like that. 6'9 uh, should instantly pop to college scouts who haven't seen him as much as uh, the international ones. Uh, the Russian creates advantages with his dribble and burst and slashing and transition scoring. Yep, no, I've been, a, I've been a fan of the little bit I've seen of his film. Curious to see how he grows. I don't necessarily think the college game is going to suit him all that great, but I, I don't know. I, I'm such a hater of the college space, even though I was there for a long time, but whatever. Uh, upside will show most when he's on the ball, though he's effective at moving without it and cutting for easy baskets. The foreign guys always are because they literally teach them how to play without basketballs. So they're just smarter, but that's that's the lottery, y'all. That's what we got for the lottery. I'll go through uh, some of these other ones, and we'll touch on them really, really quickly. But Oklahoma City Thunder, uh, Noah Esengue, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Haven't watched any film, really, on this guy. Not much at all, but another French dude. Uh, who are they comparing him to? Jabari Walker and Precious Achua. That doesn't get me too excited. I'm waiting for someone in particular right now. Where's my guy? And y'all always know I got a couple guys every year just rock with my guy all right just rock with him boogie fland to the pelicans point guard from arkansas they compare him to darius garland i could kind of see that crafty as hell there he is there's my guy rocco Z zikarski uh big ass dude 72 about 230 australia walker kessler donovan Klingon type I like him, man. I like him. He got good at basketball late, and I feel like he's still figuring a lot of stuff out, but I feel like this guy could be really, really talented. I like the way he moves. I think he's got good instincts. Uh, I, th I like his attitude. He's a hustler, so everything that I like out of my big man. Everything that I like out of my big man. Uh, Hugo Gonzalez. Yeah, that's another one. He's interesting. He is very interesting. I mean, we've seen him a lot higher in mock drafts. We've seen him in top 10. And I mean, it's early, right? Things are going to change a ton. But currently playing for Real Madrid at 18, which is always impressive. 6'7", Jonathan Kaminga type. Like, he's he's had some really big scoring outbursts and stuff. Seems like he can do a little bit of everything. So he's going to be one to watch. Uh, we got Darian Reed. That's right, from Alabama, small forward. I've got a really good connection at Alabama, like a really good connection to a guy that's on the team there. Um, he's been telling me good things. Likes him. But, I mean, I, like, he'd, he'd, he'd be real with me. He'd be real with me. Like, he's not going to dog his dude. But, like, you know what I'm saying? DeAndre Hunter, Aaron Gorn type. So, Interesting. Uh, Donovan Freeman, IMG Academy, Syracuse Center, 6'9", 205. It's not the most interesting physicals in the world, but they compare him to Jonathan Isaac. think he's just going to be a really interesting defender. So cool, 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 cool. Jaleel uh, Bathia. I've seen a little bit of him. He's going to Miami, right? Yep, Miami, 6'5". They have him as a small forward. It was my understanding that he was like a two slash three or a two slash one kind of a kind of a combo guard. And they're comparing him to Anthony Simons, which makes me think that that would be the case. Uh, the level of intrigue around him is peaked last year when he dropped 40 points at the Classic. Yeah, it looked like he had really good athleticism. Like he wasn't like quick necessarily, at least from what I watched. But he seemed to like know how to use his body and, as a, and his athleticism to get around the court. Seemed like he had a good shot making uh, arsenal and like uh, had a couple moves in the bag. So could be a name to watch uh carter bryant yeah i've seen a bit of him arizona guy i'm always so curious about these arizona guys someone always kind of um peaks from them right and finds his way into the nba and can contribute a marcus morris comparison that's interesting asa noel i like this guy i like this guy 6 11 power forward he's shown the ability to kind of step out and hit a little bit looks like an okay enough athlete how do they kind of comp compare him live motor i would agree with that should deliver immediate impact around the rim at georgia covers a lot of ground loves to crash the glass he's developing three points stroke or yeah that's what interested me like i watched him shoot around a couple times and i was like oh interesting interesting very cool very cool will riley uh for the dallas mavericks here going to illinois yep seen this as well illinois is going to be a really interesting team going to be a really really interesting team kelly Oubre, Keyshawn george is kind of the comparison can put the ball on the floor a little bit uh might be able to step out and hit some shots should be an okay athlete 
we'll see. Michael Rusic? Rusic? I, I don't know. He's Croatian. Uh, comparison to Mo Wagner. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because he's like, he's the one that's like kind of small, right? Uh, 6'10", 220. Yeah, absolutely. An efficient bench player at 17 years old. Yep, he's kind of getting bullied right now. But he's been able to step out and hit a little bit. So we'll see. We'll see with him. We'll see. Alex Tui. Oh, boy, the Sydney Kings guy. Uh, 6'7", small forward, Australian. Comparing him to, like, Grady Dick and stuff. Uh, supposed to be able to shoot the ball. Yep, that's all I'll say, necessarily. Uh, Dink Pate, that's right, uh, G, G League Ignite guy. Uh, now he's with the Go-Go, I believe, the Mexico City. Or, no, they're not the Go-Go anymore. They're the Capitans. I... Look, the G League changes changes a lot. I can't keep track of anything. But yeah, another big point guard, they're saying. Because um, do I think he's going to be an NBA point guard? No, I don't necessarily think so. I see him being as more of like a two, uh, a guy that could put the ball on the floor a little bit. By the way, these Kyries that he's wearing right here, I loved that shoe and I had that shoe. It was really good. I just got myself a new pair of shoes, which I'll stay for the end of the video. I'll show you the shoes I just got because I'm, I'm, I'm messing with them right now and I, I like them. They're kind of uh, unorthodox. But Sean Livingston vibes 100% because he's not a great like outside shooter. So I can see that. Cannon Catchings, that's a sick name. I have no idea who you are. BYU, unlisted weight. Oh, y'all got me interested. Okay, I might have to watch me some Cannon Catchings. Highlights later, we got Carter Knox going to Brooklyn. He's a small forward from Arkansas. That's right. We'll, we'll see how uh, Coach does over there with his new group over there in Arkansas. Then we got Kwame Evans Jr., who was with Oregon last season. Showed some sparks. Uh, probably could have gotten picked in the first round this year because, I mean, there wasn't a lot going on, but he decided to stick around. Probably got a decent NIL bag. And they compare him to JT Thor. Interesting. Yeah, obviously the three-point shot wasn't that good for him last year, but I'm interested. I'm interested nonetheless. But yeah, that is that is the mock draft. I I don't I don't know enough about a lot of these other guys to say anything all that crazy. I'm just kind of scrolling through to see if there's anybody I really care that much about. I don't think so. I don't think so. But anyway, I appreciate you guys for sticking around and everything. I'll I'll you know what? Let me just let me just find the shoes. It's this website crossover culture that I, I, I got some shoes from them when I was in college and I wore them and they made one of my favorite basketball shoes ever. I just got these right here. I just got them shipped to me today and I just got them. I just put them on and I was messing around with them today at the gym. Really, really like them so far. So I don't know. I'm not sponsored by these or anything, but if you guys are looking for cool basketball shoes that aren't quite as expensive as Nike's, but I think they're still good quality, like this is, this is a recommendation I have to you as a guy that plays a lot of basketball, and I wore the shit out of their shoes they made back in the day. Oh, my God. But anyway, appreciate you guys for watching. As always, if you got players that I should look into, let me know. Uh, I'll be watching them later this year. But hey, anyway, thanks so much. Talk to you guys later. Bye.